Good evening, everyone. I want to apologize for not having a devotional yesterday. I, to be completely honest, fell asleep at like 8 30, 9. I came home from a dinner party I was at and I just fell asleep. So I woke up this morning and I thought, oh no, I didn't do a Wednesday devotional. Um, and tomorrow I'm not going to do a devotional because our friends, Matthew and Daniel, who I have talked about in previous devotionals are coming to visit. They are some of our dearest friends that are flying in from Seattle tomorrow afternoon. And so I will be busy playing hostess in the afternoon and I have a funeral that I am officiating tomorrow morning. So tonight will be the devotional that will get us through until next Monday. So I really, really love hymns. I don't know if everyone knows that about me, but there is something about beautiful wooden pews and altars and gorgeous stained glass and the smell of old hymnals. That is just my favorite thing. And this Sunday, Carol Matthew, Dick Bauman, Dan Hadley and Tammy Foti sang in a beautiful music quartet at Hope, Holy Ground, the song Holy Ground. And at the end of the song, we were invited to all sing the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. It was beautiful, it was powerful, and I have had the hymn, Holy, 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 stuck in my head all week. And so I have a devotional that I did not write, but one that is incredibly powerful that I would like to read for you. Um, holy, holy, holy comes from Revelation chapter four, um, but it also comes from Exodus 33, 18 through 23, when Moses asked God, to see God's glory. And God said, okay, well, I will pass all of my goodness in front of you. And I will proclaim the name the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And the glory of the Lord passed in front of Moses. So tonight's devotion is written by Rebecca Fairs, and it is the history of the hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. And if you're like me and you are really interested in the hymn writers and those who were going through seasons of great faith or doubt or struggle or triumph when they wrote the hymns, I hope you will appreciate this too. She says, I've been singing the song, Holy, 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 since I wore my head and wore my hair in pigtail braids. Maybe you, maybe you remember singing it too as a little kid. Do you notice how we say the word holy so many times in the hymn? If I were editing this song for content, I would mark out a big chunk of the holies and write redundant in the notes. But is it redundant to God, call God holy? three times? Is it just flowery and poetic? Or is there a real theological reason for the repetition? Poetry was in Reginald Heber's blood. When he attended Oxford, his fellows threw him up on their shoulders and celebrated his earnest attempts at writing poems. They weren't great poems, but that early recognition was enough to spur young Reginald into a lifetime pursuit of poetry and writing verses. Like most rich young men in the early 1800s, Reginald was poised to take a grand European tour after graduation. However, Neapolitan had disrupted normal business and instead of sunning himself in the south of France, Reginald found himself traveling by sledge to Moscow in the middle of January. One might assume that after that chilling experience, Reginald would be content to warm his feet by an English fire for the rest of his days. Instead, his experience opened up the world for him. 
years later, working in India as the Bishop of Calcutta, Reginald continued to write poetry, both bad and good verses. And somewhere between the foothills of the Himalayas and Bombay, India, he sat down to write the now famous hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. Just like a winter vacation in Russia, Russia some things seem destined to disappoint. But Hebner learned that God is not like men. God does not fail. God is not just a little holy. God is superlatively holy, the most holy, the holiest of all. Because of our own unholy nature, it's difficult for us to conceive of just how holy and other our God is. We see everything through the lens of our human experience, and it's difficult not to let our sight be marred and limited by our own impurity and sin. Many cultures impose human weakness on their gods. Remember the impatient and petty Greek gods? But our God is not made in our own image. God is holy and set apart. Holy, holy, holy. That hymn not only points to us, points us to God's holiness, but also points us to the Trinity. The Trinity is unique to the Christian faith. Both God's holiness and God's Trinitarian nature are foreign to us, but also absolutely vital. The unblemished majesty of God and God's Trinitarian perfection sets him apart from all creation. To understand God as he is perfect in power, love, and purity will necessarily change how we see our world, disappointments, plans, and joys. God calls us to fix our eyes on him and see the beauty of his holiness in the light of which the things of this earth grow dim. God is both one and many, unity and diversity. So let us join at God's works and praise God's name on earth and sky and sea. Holy, Holy, Holy was written by Reginald Heber in 18. 26. And I will read, or I will sing the first verse, and I hope that you will join me in your homes. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to you all have a wonderful weekend. I hope to see you at church on Sunday. We begin a new series called The Faces of Our Faith, which highlight the unknown, bold, and untold stories of the Bible. I hope to see you there. Bye.